Moore Square is one of the many places in the triangle where a big event and a large crowd are expected this weekend. We're speaking with organizers about how they plan to keep you cool. The state GOP is putting pressure on the way prosecutors handle protester cases. I'm Julian Grace and we take a look at the proposed changes. The big weather story is the intense heat. When we'll see near record high temperatures and if there's any much needed rain in sight. Right now at 7 o'clock, we are tracking the hottest temperatures of the year so far. Take a look at those highs. The next several days, we are closer to 100 by the weekend. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Ashley Rowe. Let's take a live look across the area. Plans are in the works to keep people safe at some big outdoor events. First, meteorologist Mike Mays is in the WRAL Severe Weather Center with a closer look at these forecasts. Mike. Yeah, the heat is really going to ramp up this weekend, Ashley. We have that big ridge of high pressure that still set to build on in. Now, I've shaved back some of the temperatures, uh, for especially for Friday and into the weekend as well. Uh, we expect about 88 for the normal high, 90 for the high tomorrow, 92 on Friday. We previously had about 94 for the high. And then Saturday and Sunday, we just dropped it by a degree, 97 Saturday, 98 on Sunday. Still extremely hot. Heat exhaustion, heat stroke could come on quickly if you overexert yourself. And the excellent news is rain chances are actually going up on Monday now up to about a 50% chance with more cloud cover perhaps only in the low 90s at this point. The bad news is with the increase in humidity those heat index values will go up and over the weekend we may see heat advisories issued feeling like 103 on Saturday maybe 109 on Sunday. 109 is a little debatable on Monday depending on the cloud cover and how showers and storms form and over the weekend our record highs are 100 will come close probably at this point now not looking like we would hit them. Now you might want to find relief down east of the coast but there's a problem. High rip current risks today and maybe through the weekend and I'll explain why actually coming up in less than 15 minutes. All right Mike and mm -hmm. talk about timing. We have this heat wave at the same time we've got plenty of big outdoor events happening around the triangle. Major entertainers like Maggie Rogers, Willie Nelson and Bob Dylan will be at Coastal Credit Union Music Park and Raleigh Pride is Saturday. WRAL's Monica Casey spoke with organizers about steps they're taking to keep people cool. <laughs> Moore Square will be packed this weekend with more than 40 vendors participating in the NC Vintage Bazaar. Organizers tell us on top of all those tents, there will be one extra one to help keep people attending safe and cool. Garrett Youngwright and Aaron Wan founded the NC Vintage Bazaar in 2021. Um, just been growing the event and it's really created a big community for this kind of stuff and um, for people who support more sustainable fashion. This Saturday, they're expecting between one and 2,000 people in Moore Square between 12 and 5. We're building like a cool off zone, so we have a little tent. So all of our vendors will have their own tents, but we're having our own little cool off tent. So we'll have a bunch of chairs for people to sit down in. In. The tent will give them shade. Um, we'll have a table with some water, some sunscreen. Uh, we'll have fans blowing. The event is one of many happening in the Triangle over the next few days, with major concerts, including the Outlaw Music Festival, happening at Coastal Credit Union Music Park, and Raleigh's annual Pride event set for Saturday. Dr. Anjani Joyner at Duke tells WRAL it's important to drink water as a precaution, not just to stay cool in the moment. So hydrate before you're going to be active before you go outside, and that will help protect your body. Joyner also recommends keeping an eye on more vulnerable populations, watching for warning signs in the very young and the elderly. Um, so if someone is starting to um, sweat a lot, get really um, fatigued, maybe not acting like they normally act, they might be experiencing signs and symptoms of heat stroke. In Raleigh, Monica Casey, WREL News. In a statement, the amphitheater tells WREL they are allowing fans to bring in empty, reusable water bottles to the venue. They wrote, the venue is also equipped with misting fans, multiple cooling stations, and we have complimentary sunscreen available for fans. New warrants uncovered by WREL show State Treasurer Dale Falwell is under investigation. Falwell is accused of using three state vehicles to take dozens of personal trips in 2022 and 2023. The warrants say Falwell drove straight state cars hundreds of miles while commuting on a trip to the dentist, to a country club, on a trip to the Biltmore, among other locations. Falwell tells WRL he hasn't had the chance to review the warrants, but he believes he has always complied with state law. 
The SBI is continuing to investigate this case. So far, no charges have been filed. Tonight, more on the arrest of the former HR director for the Department of Revenue, who was arrested last week in Los Angeles for a child sex crime. Harlan Fry did not come to the door when we knocked at his home in a quiet Greensboro golf community. We spoke to the TikToker who calls himself Black Biden. He confronted Fry at a Long Beach Hyatt hotel, capturing an alarming 20 minute conversation where he admits to seeking out a 15 year old boy for oral sex. Fry said he was in Los Angeles for a work conference and got on the apps as he often does. Within a few minutes, police showed up to arrest him. He had contacted one of my decoy profiles, which was happened to be on a, a gay dating app. And he was straight to the point, was like, hey, like, I'm trying to meet up and have fun. Mm. Fry was released from jail on a $75,000 bond. The Wake County Sheriff explained what happened after a deputy shot someone they say refused to leave an apartment after being evicted. It happened on Water Oak Drive in Raleigh yesterday. Sky 5 flew over this Raleigh apartment complex where sheriff's deputies engaged in a multi-hour standoff. You can see an armored vehicle and several deputies with their guns drawn. Sheriff Willie Rowe did not identify the deputy or the man who was involved. That man who was shot is in the hospital tonight. Fayetteville police are searching for two people. They want to question about the death of a Fort Liberty soldier. Javonna Flannery and Kamanti Johnson are wanted for questioning in the case. To be clear, they are not charged with anything. This all has to do with the death of 21-year-old Lamarvian Kinnan. He was found dead two weeks ago at the USA Car Wash on Deaver Circle in Hope Mills. Anyone with information on this case should contact Cumberland County Crime Stoppers. Two people have been arrested for a series of burglaries in Cary and surrounding areas. Back in November, five Cary restaurants were targeted, all within a five-mile span of Kildare Farm Road. Robert Harris and Yayanara Locklear of Fayetteville face several counts of felony breaking and entering, property damage, and larceny for these incidents. Surveillance video shows one of the break-ins last year at Brothers of New York Pizza, where the suspects stole cash from the register. The pair also faces charges for incidents in Raleigh, Morrisville, Wake Forest, and Apex. Tonight, the Durham community is remembering a well-known business owner. Richard Morgan, the owner of Morgan Imports, passed away last week. The well-known gift shop was an institution in Durham for decades, most recently located in the Brightleaf Square District before it closed for good in 2020. Morgan was 88 years old. A celebration of his life is planned for this weekend. You can read more about his legacy and the impact on the community in the story right now on WRAL.com. A piece of the state budget's proposal is not about spending. It's about addressing protesters. Lawmakers, Republican lawmakers, want to make it harder for prosecutors to offer plea deals or dismiss charges against people who commit crimes while publicly protesting. In the last two hours, Democrats tried to remove that clause, but Republicans want to keep it. WRAL's Julian Grace takes a look at how the proposal could impact prosecutors in the state. Some believe that proposal that will place more pressure on state prosecutors will also keep some protesters away. The capital city has seen just about every type of protest. How many protests have you participated in? Too many to count. For activist Kerwin Pittman, that's a lot. Be arrested this morning. But because of a proposal trickling through the state house, he may not join a protest anytime soon. It will make anybody think twice um, before they actually take that step. House Republicans proposed a new law that would require a prosecutor to detail why they dismiss or reduce charges for rioting, disorderly conduct, and other crimes protesters often face. Will this change how you look at cases? I think we still have to continue to balance as we do in any situation, you know, evaluate the evidence, apply the law, but also then balance, you know, the individual's prior record, uh, what other circumstances might come into play. District Attorney Lauren Freeman says there is a very strong line between civil disobedience and a constitutional right. But supporters of the bill say some protesters committed crimes only to have their charges lessened and then put right back on the streets. Yeah, I don't think that is an issue and certainly I'd be interested in hearing from them specifically what they're referencing. 
We did some checking ourselves. We looked back at a very public protest when protesters took over Durham Highway and blocked lanes in November of 2023. Four people were charged with class two misdemeanors and were later sentenced to three months of unsupervised probation and 36.5 hours of community service. But as for Pittman, he doesn't believe this proposal is just about holding people accountable, but also about discouraging others from joining protests. Hey, this is uh, definitely a blatant attempt to um, target individuals who are exercising their constitutional rights to protest. Reporting in Raleigh, Julian Grace, WRL News. Though the budget bill may make it through the House, it's unclear if the state Senate will even take it up. If you visit Cliffs of the Noose State Park in Wayne County, you'll be greeted by this sign letting you know this, that the lake is closed due to a staffing shortage. It's not the only North Carolina state park struggling to stay staffed. Out of 575 full-time positions within the parks, 140 of those are unfilled. Cliffs of the Noose is one of two parks imposing a partial closure because of that. It's leading to disappointment from park visitors, especially some with grandkids in tow. Well, when I first saw the sign, I was very disappointed because that was one of our things to do. They're here on vacation. So that was one of our things to do, to just kind of visit the local spots. If you'd like to apply for any of the open positions with North Carolina State Parks, we have a link to the job postings on our website, WRAL.com. Still ahead, another shot at legalizing medical marijuana in North Carolina. The measure lawmakers introduced today and what's next for the bill. Plus, a North Carolina county commissioner is accused of starting a wildfire that burned hundreds of acres and threatened homes. Details next. Brian Schrader in the WRO Live Center. You're taking a live look right now at the legislative building in downtown Raleigh, where in the past 10 minutes, WRO's Laura Leslie reports the State House has tentatively approved a $31.7 billion budget, largely along party lines. It passed 72 to 36. That budget includes small additional raises for teachers and state employees. It also expands the state's private school voucher program, and it includes some money to stabilize child care providers, but not as much as required. A final vote comes tomorrow morning around the same time that the state Senate is going to make its own budget proposal. Another story out of the legislative building that you'll see right now in the WRL News app, lawmakers will no longer push a bill to bulldoze archaeological sites. This is part of a story that WRL's NC Capital team broke a few weeks ago. Lawmakers proposed a bill that would have allowed developers to build beach houses in Cedar Point, not too far from Emerald Isle. And that development is proposed on what archaeologists say is a former Native American community. The Senate Judicial Judiciary Committee looked at that bill today. A final vote is expected next week. Okay, and meanwhile, the Tuscarora Nation says existing development on that land that Brian was just talking about could be in violation of a United Nations resolution with protections for indigenous peoples. Officials believe the site may have been inhabited for thousands of years before European explorers and settlers came to the area. The state's top archaeologist tells me that this could be one of the biggest archaeological finds ever in North Carolina, certainly one of the biggest decades. The Tuscarora claim ties to the site, even if state officials say they can't yet associate it with any specific tribe. A new version of the bill is scheduled to be up for debate again early next week. You can follow our coverage at the NC Capital section of WRAL.com. Medical marijuana is back under consideration in North Carolina. State senators today reintroduced a proposal that would allow people with serious illnesses to use it as a treatment. Cancer, Parkinson's disease, ALS, sickle cell anemia, they're all just a few of the illnesses that would qualify for medical marijuana use. The state Senate has supported similar bills in the past, but their proposals have died in the state house. Some believe this year might be different. The proposal still needs approval from the state Senate, the state house, and the governor to become law. A county commissioner is accused of causing a wildfire that burned more than 500 acres and threatened homes in Carteret County. The North Carolina Forest Service says Chris Chadwick faces charges for setting the fire Sunday. Officials say debris burning caused it. Today, crews are still trying to get the fire under control, put out the hot spots. It is 90% contained. Officials say winds are expected to help improve visibility 
and air quality soon. Boom Supersonic is taking off in our state with its new facility opening earlier this week. WREL talked to CEO Blake Scholl about the exciting future of supersonic flight and our state's role in the process. Our goal to provide supersonic flights ultimately to every passenger and every route around the planet. And we built the very first super factory right there in Greensboro, North Carolina in just 17 months. The company is still three to four years away from its first overture passenger jet, and the first test flight won't come until a few years after that. Cumberland County will be opening cooling stations this weekend. As temperatures continue to climb, several places will be open for anyone who needs access to air conditioning. That includes all eight libraries and the parks and rec centers. Uh, there are going to be a lot of folks that are going to be making some use out of these cooler spots. Wouldn't it be nice to also go to the beach, Mike? Yeah, but that comes with a downside, Ashley, because uh, the rip current threats are actually going to increase in the coming days because of this system. Now, already the eastern facing beaches this afternoon, Carolina Beach, Topsail, all had a high risk. There was at least one rip current rescue over toward Curry Beach, and the rip current threat tomorrow will be higher along the coast, all the way from Duck, all the way to Curry Beach will be on the high side and with that approaching the coast it's likely to remain high into the weekend so yeah you can go down to the water but don't get in it because it won't be safe so we have that system we have tropical storm alberto we have a new system here that will actually move into the location where alberto is right now and there's possibly another system that could be developing in the coming days in the southern caribbean it's like suddenly the tropics are taking off so we've been talking about this for the past few days didn't really look all that impressive, but now all of a sudden models are suggesting this could develop. We, all, we also have tropical model plots that the Hurricane Center has issued today, tracking to the west-northwest. Some bring it up to the north or skirt our coast. We'll see if that happens. We would really benefit to see some rain from the system, but I don't see anything doing that so far. And the European ensembles have actually ramped up. Yesterday was about a 20% chance of developing. Now it's up to about a 50% chance being carried into Florida and then gradually dissipating. And that's the most likely route that I'm seeing right now. So there's Alberto. It developed into a tropical storm this morning, became a name storm, and it's impacting all the way from Grand Isle, Louisiana, where they're having overwash on some of the roads there, to Texas, where there could be some storm surge of two to four feet and rainfall up to about 10 inches, makes landfall tonight up to 20 inches in some of the mountainous terrain here that will cause mudslides and landslides. And then the next system, which is now in the Pacific, will cross over Mexico, move into this area, and over the next seven days has a 30% chance of developing. But the European ensembles actually had this at a 90% chance of developing, and the model plots carry it into the Bay of Campeche and eventually over into Mexico, where they're already going to see some flooding rainfall from Alberto. This could possibly become barrel as we head into the weekend. Lots to watch in the coming days. Warm tonight, mid to upper 60s for the low, 65 in South Hill, 68 in Raleigh. And then tomorrow, maybe a degree or two cooler. We had 91 today in Raleigh, about 90 tomorrow, 90 at Rocky Mount, 90 in Roxborough. And it's quite possible dew points could fall into the 50s tomorrow afternoon. That would be an added bonus. But the heat still expected to rise. Summer officially arrives tomorrow, 92 on Friday. Upper 90s into the weekend. So happy to see our rain probabilities going up for Sunday night, Monday, and Monday night. 40% Sunday night, 50% chance for scattered storms on Monday, and then 40% in the evening. And with a bigger heat, we'll watch for some big storms. Upper 90s Tuesday and Wednesday, and perhaps by next Friday, there could be another round of showers and storms as well. So we're seeing increasing chances for rain, but unfortunately, we're still seeing that bigger heat, Ashley. Yes, big heat, but hey, if we can get that rain on Monday, that would be awesome. Fingers Thanks, crossed. Mike. Fayetteville State University just broke its all-time summer school attendance record, and the students' tuition ah, was free. What helped make that happen? Next. For the second day, the second gentleman is in Durham, and today he was celebrating Juneteenth. He attended multiple events today, including a barbecue lunch. There, Doug Emhoff talked with city and state leaders, including Durham Mayor Leonardo Williams and County Commissioner Brenda Howerton. Emhoff mentioned his wife, Vice President Kamala Harris, and all of her work as the senator to lay the groundwork to make Juneteenth a federal holiday. It was a hot, sticky day today, but something really cool happened at Fayetteville State University. Chancellor Daryl Allison announced the university received a donation to make summer school at FSU free again. WRAL's Gilbert Bays was on campus for this announcement. It's official. For the second year in a row, Fayetteville State University has broken its all-time summer school attendance record. 
4,463 students are enrolled in free summer school. Regina Keenan is one of them. When you found out you could go to summer school free, what did you think? Oh my God, <laughs> that is awesome. I was so excited. I was like, okay, they gave us a deadline. I'm like, let me get it done right now because you can't miss a deadline of being able to go to school for free. The students can take up the seven credit hours to catch up or help them graduate in less than four years. A $750,000 anonymous donation is helping to foot the bill. Many of them need housing and, and a food plan. We take care of that as well. We want to make sure that at Felber State University, it's one thing to get you here. We want to make sure that we come alongside you to complete it. So summer school continues to thrive here at Fayetteville State University, and the chancellor says he's going to do everything he can to make sure it continues to be free to all students. At Fayetteville State University, Gilbert Bays, WREL News. Oh, tonight is going to be an exciting night for the Team USA swimming trials right here on WRAL. Olympic veteran Ashley Twitchell, who lives in Cary, a local gal, will compete in the women's 1500 meter freestyle final. Wish her good luck. Last night, Holly Springs native Andrew Capobianco competed with his partner in the men's three meter synchronized final. They were amazing. They came in second place, unfortunately not making it on the Paris team. Back in 2021, Capobianco took home the silver medal in Tokyo with Mike Hickson in the men's synchronized springboard. Just incredible what they do. And for the women, NC State's Katherine Burkoff competed in the 100-meter backstroke. She finished second, and that will likely send her to Paris. Unconfirmed just yet, but we are, it's pretty much going to happen. Swimmer Regan Smith broke the world record in the women's 100-meter backstroke last night, taking that top spot. Thanks for being here with us on WRAL at 7. Don't forget, USA Swimming Trials through June 23rd. Good night. Keep watching WRAL News over the Air Channel 34 and Spectrum Channel 1257.